On today's episode, we are sharing six ways entrepreneurs can quickly increase their visibility. Uh, number two, I shared with the people in my social media leads lab program earlier this week in passing, and people got so excited about it, it turned into a really interesting 20 minute discussion. So I'm excited to share that one along with the other five. Let's jump into it. There's no wrong way to be an entrepreneur, and that's the dirty little secret the business gurus don't want you to know. They want you to do things their way, but their way may not be your way. The key to success is finding the strategies that work best for you. Welcome to The Six Ways with Jerry Potter. And welcome to episode number 24 of The Six Ways, where every week we bring on a smart, innovative guest that is thriving in their field of expertise to share some of their best tips with the rest of us so we can all achieve our entrepreneurial goals. I truly believe we all do better when we all do better. My name is Jerry Potter. Yes, it rhymes with the boy wizard, founder of 5-Minute Social Media and the Social Media Leads Lab. And my guest today is Martis Burke. Uh, Marta is an empowerment coach, a TEDx speaker, and she helps entrepreneurs all over the world increase their visibility as well. Marta, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. I'm excited for this dis discussion because I know some of the people you've helped and the amazing things you've done with them. And uh, there's going to be some great stuff here today. So, But I do want to ask you a question before we start. With visibility with entrepreneurs, do you think that it's that they don't know how to be more visible or that sometimes maybe as entrepreneurs, we self-sabotage and hide more than we should or a combination of both? I definitely think it's a combination of both. And it's interesting because before I full on got into the visibility work with other people, I noticed uh, in my clients that a lot of it has to do with their personality type. Mm. So being more introverted, being extroverted, a mix of both, that all you know uh, affects how they show up and how they perceive themselves. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of not knowing how to do it and really not understanding uh, that marketing and visibility is the same thing. But visibility sounds better to some people. So, again, depending on their personality type or whatever they've <laughs> gone through before in life, they may really hate the word marketing. And it's like whenever I say visibility and that has been a marketing strategy on my part in talking more about visibility than marketing because whenever I say this to an entrepreneur, whoever they are, they say, yes, I want more visibility. No matter which stage of business they are, that's something that we all need. Otherwise, we're not going to have a business, right? So yeah, it's a combination for sure. Yeah, well, and, and you make up a great point. You and I both being marketers, we know one of the best things you can do is use the word that they're using um, or the phrase that they're using. A lot of times I will tell people there's two ways to get uh, somebody's attention. One is to yell their name and two is to say the problem that they're trying to solve. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're walking down the street and it's pouring rain and somebody says, got an umbrella, you're going to perk up right. <laughs> or, or sorry, need an umbrella, need an umbrella. You're going to go, I do, you know, so it's a great way to get attention. Um, that's interesting the way that you put that though, because it is, and it's a word that I'm hearing more and more and per possibly because I follow you. Um, but it is such a strong word that is not as loaded as the word marketing because marketing sounds heavy and expensive. Yes. <laughs> And, and, and invisibility amazing. doesn't. Yeah. So yeah. I love, love the way that you put that. That's great. All right. So six ways entrepreneurs can increase their visibility. We're going to share those. Marta brought three and I'll share three. Also, our question of the week from Leah, who asked, I want to talk about my business more, but I'm always worried about driving people away if I'm selling all the time. How can I balance between selling and everything else? So we'll answer that question for Leah and anyone else who's interested. So make sure you stay till the end of the episode for that. All right, six ways entrepreneurs can increase their visibility. Number one, Marta, what do you got? So I think you're going to love this one because you totally understand this one and you're really good at it. It's content and having a strategy for content because this is the vehicle for you to create visibility. Visibility is not just, hey, I'm here, put up a picture. There has to be some kind of text, right? There has to be some kind of message that goes along with it. And to all the three tips that I'm going to be sharing, there are layers to this. There are different levels to this. So first off, are you putting up, putting out some kind of content out there? That's my first question because there are lots of entrepreneurs that are like, I'm not making sales. And you go and you visit their, their, their social media or, you know, if you're in their mailing list or whatever, and they're like, I, it's non-existent. I don't put anything out. So if that's you, this is where you start is you create content that's related to your expertise and related to your offers, ideally. And you have to, to disseminate this somehow. So for the people that hate social media, which I honestly think that that is not a smart thing to say as an entrepreneur, because social media <laughs> is what we get to use. And it's something we can control and it is free. 
So why not leverage it? But if you hate social media, fine, find another way. Don't let that be your excuse that you can't communicate with your people and be visible. Then start building your email list. But chances are, if you're going to build an email list, how are you going to find these people or how are they going to find you? You're going to use social media or maybe you have a podcast. So that's not to say that there aren't other ways of disseminating your content, but social media is the easiest. So the first question is, do you have content out there? And if you don't, that's where you need to start. And then the second question, the second layer or the level is how consistent are you, right? Are mm -hmm. you putting it out there once a month? Because that's not going to make you very visible. And I always say something is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. So an entrepreneur that's not putting anything out is worse off than somebody that's doing something once a month. But if you are not, you know, doing it consistently, then that's also a problem. So my third level and my third question is, do you have a strategy? Because somebody that's doing it once a month uh, probably doesn't have a strategy. And sometimes yeah. there are people that say, I'm super consistent. I post every day. And so they're like, I'm doing the right thing, right? And it's like, yes and no. <laughs> because compared to someone that's not doing anything, you are being more visible by just showing up 100%. Yeah. But then the yeah. next level of that is, are you being intentional? Right. Do you have a set period of when you're launching and then you say this to some people and they're like, la, 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 I don't want to hear the word, <laughs> the word launching. And it's because it sounds intimidating. So let's take some of that intimidation out and make something that works for you. And that's why I work so much with the personalities. And I like um, really helping my clients with that, because sometimes they see me being visible and they assume they need to do what I do. And that's why I love the premise yes. of your show, because it's not how it works at all. It has to work for you. So what is the strategy that works for you? To some people saying post every day, they'd rather ca crawl in a hole. Yeah. Then let's <laughs> maybe say once a week, let's start that way, right? And then you can increase if that works for you. So that's my first step is content. That's, you know, the first step to becoming more visible is that I need to be able to find your content somewhere. Well, and to add a little bit more to the stakes of posting content is it's not just about being visible, it's about not being forgotten. Mm. And last year I did a corporate training for a real estate brokerage. And one of the things that real estate agents run into sometimes because it'll be at least a couple of years between transactions with the same client is they literally get forgotten. And if you don't have some kind of presence, at least reminding people that you are a real estate agent, then they're not going to think of you when their friend asks if they know anybody or when they decide to buy or sell their house again or whatever your business is. So yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, next up, number two, six ways entrepreneurs can quickly increase their visibility. And this is something that I brought up to my social media leads lab members this week. It was a hundred slide thing that I was doing. It was a half day workshop and it was just one slide that we were gonna blow by. And then it turned it into a 20 minute discussion because everyone's like, wait, how do we do that? And it was essentially using Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. And this is a place where you can become visible that already exists where for most businesses, your ideal people are already hanging out, right? So we can post, Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and the algorithms are pretty good at getting them in front of the right people. But if you can go into a Facebook group where all of your ideal clients or a lot of them are already gathered, then like they've already done the work for you and then you just need to be visible in there. And it doesn't necessarily mean your exact client will be in there. It could be a local women's group. It could be exactly who you're targeting. It could be different things like that. But it's not about going in and spamming. Um, I teach something in Leads Lab that I call the peacock strategy. And I called it that because you go in, you spread your feathers, you make the group, you actually make the group better, um, and then people will want to learn more about you. And the way you do that, there's, there's intricacies to it, but the short version is just go in and help people and don't do anything else. And when I was first starting to grow my business, I would go into these Facebook groups where my perfect people were hanging out, and I would just help everybody that was having social media questions. And I didn't say, hire me, DM me, I didn't spam anybody. They would go and check out my profile and I watched it happen over and over again. Somebody would join my membership and I'd be like, oh, that's that person I helped in that group um, a couple weeks ago. And so Facebook and LinkedIn, they're both there. It's easy to do. You do not have to you know, violate your ethics or you know, don't break the group rules or anything like that. Just literally go in and serve. And if you do it the right way, you'll be amazed what can come out of that. So. Mm -hmm. Which that is so good. And I so agree with that. And you're making me think that I need to switch the order that I was going to share <laughs> my, my, <laughs> my, uh, my tips, because this goes hand in hand with another tip of mine. And I love the peacock because, oh my gosh, that's, that's what I like to call, um, being a star, being a star student 
or just being the star in there and and having people notice you. So I I think I'm ready for my next one. Yeah, well that's okay. They don't have to. They don't have to go in order. But this is you know, okay. this is good teasing ahead, right, for a later Please. one. But I will say it when this goes really well. It got to the point when I focused on this that the actual owners of the group would tag me whenever mm. anybody had a social media question. So being, imagine being the expert in a group that makes the group better, right? You're not spamming, you're not stealing people from the group. It works even better if it's not a group about your exact niche, right? It's, some, it's just something where your people are. Where the admins are so grateful for you that they're tagging you, and that's what can happen with that. And so, yeah. um, all right, next up, number three, six ways entrepreneurs can quickly increase their visibility. Marta, what do you got? So I will say, again, to piggyback on what you just said, networking. And, uh, and just like you said, creating engagement for somebody else, it's a win-win because they want their group to be engaged. So when it comes to networking, again, there's different levels of this. And I'm going to ask similar questions to what I asked for my first, um, for my first tip, which is, first of all, are you a part of networking groups? Are you a part of other groups, right? Other than the ones, the ones that you manage, because people need to know you. And a great way, because oftentimes as entrepreneurs, we're, we're looking into growing our group, right? Yes. I don't want to join all these other things because then I'm growing their group. Yeah. <laughs> and not my group, join my group instead of joining, you know, the, the other people's. But the more things you are a part of, that's more visibility. Obviously, don't spread yourself too thin. And that's what I like to call also doing a networking audit. Because many of us, especially the extroverts of us, we go off and we join all of the things. And then... That takes me to question number two, how active are you in these groups? So first of all is if you're not a part of at least three, let's just say three, right? Three different pools of people that are in different, um, maybe they're all entrepreneurs, but the focus is a little bit different. So for example, I'm a part of a women's group mm -hmm. that it is uh, networking, but they, they have a disclaimer that it's connection first and business comes second. Okay. That's the focus of the group, which means the culture is a little bit different than a group that is business oriented. And we go in there. We're not talking about our cats. We're not talking about our kids. I mean, obviously, it comes up in conversation. But the focus is what's my offer this month? You know what I'm saying? Like, And no one's going to be looking down on you if you lead that way, because that's the culture of that group. So this is what I nice. mean by being a part of different pools because they have different leadership, which means they have you know different people in there and different a different focus. So first of all, if you're in a bunch of them, do an audit, make sure you are actually participating. And by being active, I mean, do you actually attend the meetings, whether it be in person or virtual? Because sometimes how many of us have paid for memberships that we never really attended. And that's when it's time, you know, uh, beginning of the year, every quarter, whatever, to do that audit. Like, I'm not really taking, um, you know, advantage of this. So it's time for me to let go and to cancel or whatever. And if you're not a part of many groups, start researching. I can guarantee you if you talk to a handful of your entrepreneur friends, they know a group that you're not a part of. And you can go and experiment. That doesn't mean you need to join them right away. Attend a meeting. That's visibility for you. Yeah. Right. Um, have your camera on, right? Exactly. Have your camera <laughs> on. So that's, that's my third question is, uh, so first, are you part of a group? Are you being active? Meaning, are you attending? And the third one, are you promoting yourself? And that doesn't mean being salesy, but do you actually raise your hand when they say, does anybody have an offer and say, I do? Because in usually, especially business focused groups, there is a moment where you can talk about something that you're promoting. And many people are like, oh, I did it last time, so I can't do it this time. And it's like, friend, this is the time. <laughs> so why wouldn't you raise your hand? So if I, you know, if you are being active, which is my second layer, my second level, and can I ask a member of the group if they know what you do? Can I ask a member of the group if they know what your offers are? Because that's how referrals happen, right? Is that yes. you make your business so visible and so obvious that somebody knows what you do and they can go and refer you. So, and networking really will help with what I said before in terms of content, because you're not going to network every day, hopefully, because that would be exhausting. But what you can do is post on social media is, you know, nurture your email list. So when people are telling me, Marta, you're visible, you're everywhere. They don't see me every day, obviously not, but they do see me in a meeting and then they see me on social media. So it all compounds. You're not gonna see people every day, but you can bridge the gap by right after you attend that meeting, you at least friend one person on social media. Go look mm -hmm. for them, right? Look them up. Like that's the strategy that I'm talking about. Be intentional in promoting yourself. What is your strategy? Do you have a networking strategy? 
Because if you don't, again, something's better than nothing, at least attend the meetings, right? But then be intentional. Who do I want to meet today? You know, who is the person, one person that I'm going to schedule a one-on-one Zoom call with today? Start thinking about those things and being more intentional. I love that you brought up the culture because it is so important in any networking opportunity and and in Facebook groups as well. Uh, once I realized that I was getting business from this because I just like helping people, I like talking about social media, so I was just doing it kind of for fun, see what people were struggling with. But once I realized I was starting to get business from it, I was share that with somebody, and they said, "Oh, I'm in this other group, and nobody helps anybody with social media, and everybody needs help. You got to join this group." Well, it was attached to a two thousand dollar program, and I went, "Okay." Yeah, I'm in. Well, I mean, there's something to be said. You know, groups that are attached to paid programs have uh, people that are willing to spend money, right? So I spent two thousand dollars to get this big, robust course and go into this group. Well, I never went to the course. Went through the course. I never uh, went to the meetings. I didn't learn the culture, and I just couldn't crack it in there. And so, so it is a quality thing for sure when we're talking yeah. about the groups and the networking. And and so a few a few that you do really well in, and you build real relationships, obviously trumps just trying to be everywhere all the time. So yeah, definitely. yeah. Well, yeah and you brought that. a good point in terms of paid versus uh, free versus paid. That's something I would love to add is make sure you are in some paid groups because the level of people is going to be different than, oh yeah, our time, I'm a part of all these Facebook groups, right? These free Facebook groups. It's not the same as you paying to either be in a coaching program, like what you said, and then rising up being the peacock or the star student, right? And then people, you know, even the, the mentor is going to tag you and stuff like that's networking. Even if you're being a part of somebody else's program, that's also networking, friending the people that are in there, reaching out to them once in a while. Hey, I remember in the last call, you said something. Um, are you, how is it, how is it going? You know, that's basic. Um, but also being a part of paid networking groups that meet for the sole purpose of, um, you know, sharing about their business. Yeah. That's great. All right. Um, next up, number four of six ways entrepreneurs can easily and quickly increase their visibility. And by the way, this is one of the easiest ways to show up more often. And that is to share almost everything. Now, I don't necessarily mean, you know, violating your privacy. You can certainly have boundaries and things like that. But I, I've been flipping through this. It's a really short book, but it's called Show Your Work. And it's targeted at all sorts of art, whether you're an online creator or a musician or a painter or whatever. But it talks about how once upon a time, uh, you know, a painter would never show off a painting before it was done, right? And partially because we didn't have the technology and the means to do that, but it was a very different world. Now people love to see the process. They love to know that you put work into it, that it took time. And so whenever you're doing something, you know, like this, and and Marta, you are great at this. You basically you can document the whole thing and it's content that's already happened in your life. And so all you have to do is share it. And so, you know, I, Marta and I are, are friends on Facebook. And so every time you do something like go and sing the national anthem at a Nuggets game, a Denver Nuggets game, for example, there's a post about when it's coming up. There's a post the day of, there's a post afterwards. And every time I'm like, oh, wow, this is so cool. And I learned something new about you, but it's just, it's such a simple concept. I mean, the, the book, the book is called uh, Show Your Work, um, 10 Ways to Share Your Creativity and Get Discovered. Might as well say, and have more visibility, right? Yes. Um, but yeah, show your work, that's it. And it's the content that you're already doing and it already exists, so. Mm. Yeah, and that is so good. And that goes back to the content tip of mine, because one of the things I hear, and I'm sure you hear too, is I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you have a business, you should know what to say, because it's the same thing you're telling your clients. But then there is this fear of they're not going to hire me if I'm telling them the same thing. And that couldn't be further from the truth because when people pay, they pay attention, right? And there's the element of accountability that cannot be replaced by just, you know, a free interaction on social media. So yes, share before, share during, share after, and the years to come because it's yours to share. So keep sharing. <laughs> Yeah, one of my members was being interviewed on the BBC in the UK today. Wow. And she's like, what do I do? I've got to take advantage of this. And I was like, take a deep breath. You're going to take <laughs> advantage of this for the next five years. We are going to like, we are going to talk about this so much. It's mm -hmm. not all about today. Today is good. Yes, here's what let's what we'll do today. But yeah, we're going to weave this in for, for years and years to come because what a cool honor that you yeah. have, you know, to have that that happening. So all right, next up is number five of six ways entrepreneurs can quickly increase their visibility. What do you got, Marta? So I will have to say speaking, 
um, and also debunk uh, some myths around speaking. Uh, first, obviously having a strategy around speaking, but many people consider speaking, you have a microphone and you're in front of a room. Um, and especially, you know, in a post pandemic world, we have learned that you, you are a speaker by being on Zoom. <laughs> Imagine right. that. Yeah. And you're a speaker <laughs> by going live on uh, your Facebook or Instagram or whatever platform you're using. And you are a speaker by being on podcasts. So um, I think there's the two sides of uh, people undermining the power of speaking outside of being, you know, on a stage holding a microphone and of people being afraid of putting themselves out there because, oh, I could never, you know, be on a podcast because I, I'm not a speaker and I don't know, I wouldn't know what to say. And to that, I say first, you do know what to say, because if you have a business, then you should. And also everyone starts somewhere. Right. So when you see me doing all the things that I'm doing, uh, remember, first and foremost, that I'm English is not even my first language to begin with. So I did not come out of the womb <laughs> doing what I'm doing. And nobody did. Right. We all work up to where we are right now. And it's all practice. Everything is practice. So when it comes to speaking is understanding that uh, you are a speaker by doing these different things that I just shared. But also that um, speaking is a form of content. It's a form of you communicating your message, of you letting people, just like what you said before, um, in on what you teach, giving everything away, but they're still gonna have to hire you. So that's where the strategy comes in, is making sure you have a signature talk that is attached to your offers. Because that's at times where I see speakers kind of um, not really leverage the speaking, is that they come and they do this amazing presentation but then there is no continuation to that. Like mm -hmm. you don't want the power of that presentation because in person there's just such a different energy than virtually, especially, but even if it's a virtual speech, you want there to be a next step. And the next step should be your offer. It should be hire me now. And if you don't make that connection, even if you do make an offer at the end, it's disconnected, most likely you're not gonna get anything. So if you are already speaking, amazing. Um, if you don't have really a strategy for it, create one. And then the next step is, are you getting clients out of your speaking? Because at times it's like, yes, I'm being visible. I'm speaking everywhere. But it's that, you know, uh, ending up resulting in clients. And if not, most likely it is because whatever you're speaking, you know, your signature talk is not in alignment with your offers. And that is very important. And for the people that are like, I don't even know where I would find opportunities. It goes back to the networking. Everything, all of my three tips, they overlap. And with yours as well, <laughs> is how do you find places to speak? Well, first and foremost, you announce <laughs> publicly or you tell, tell your friends, I want to speak more. And you watch that more opportunities are going to come. So you have to really, you know, be intentional about that. And then put yourself in the right rooms where there is opportunity for you to be invited to speak. Obviously, you're going to be pitching a lot. And this is what I say. I started my speaking journey and really being intentional in 2019. And right now, several years later, I've gotten to a point where I get more invited than I pitch myself because people know me and I am visible. So yeah. They don't know me. They're seeing me and they're like, Hey, would you want, and sometimes I get people are like, I don't think you have time for this, Marta. <laughs> Yeah, but would you potentially and I'm like, yes, of course, I would love to. I, so, I was just gonna say that because I, you know, this probably goes back to, you know, before I was married, and I was dating I, this, this was my this was my mo. I didn't want to be rejected, of course. And I would see these guys that would go around and ask out 100 girls knowing they might walk away with three phone numbers or whatever in the same night, right? And I'm like, Oh, mm -hmm. that's not for me. So my mo was to flirt until the girl asked me out like my wife asked me out that was just always my thing and that was the same thing with speaking for a lot of years because it was like i just want to wait to be invited i just want to wait to be invited and then i realized because it what happened was exactly what you just said um somebody you know i might say not publicly on social media just in passing like yeah i'm looking to do more speaking i love being a guest on podcast and somebody would say oh i would love to have you on my podcast or my stage. I just never thought you would have the time or you would do it, you know? And so it's a it's a great mindset shift from the fear of rejection or the fear of looking silly or whatever to um, people want you already. You yes. just have to let them know, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, you have, that's so good. You gotta it, write it down and read it every day. <laughs> yeah, let them know you're available fearlessly. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad you said that. So, mm -hmm. all right, next up, number six of six ways entrepreneurs can increase their visibility, and that is to make more offers. So 
I am very much uh, in the camp that early on I was like, well, I don't want to sell too much. I don't want to drive anyone away. And and I do coach people sometimes where I started saying this phrase, um, you know, uh, if you sell, you repel because some people just, that's all they do. They just put offers out all the time, all the time, all the time. But there are places that you can be putting out your offers. And if you solve a problem, and I would argue that every business solves a problem. Even if you sell novelty t-shirts, you solve a problem. And so everyone's solving a problem. And so if you solve a problem, it's like people are going to want to know that that exists. And mm-hmm. I know it's hard sometimes if you only have like one product or service you sell, but you can repackage that in so many ways and so many different offers. And it doesn't mean, and what it looks like we're going to talk a little bit more about this in our question of the week here in just a second, yeah. but it doesn't mean that you just post an offer on social media every day. You still have to give value. You still have to show up. You still have to network all the things that Marta has been sharing today. But once you're already doing that, then it can go within that. And so, for example, one thing in my business is I send these daily emails, dailysocialmediatips.com, five days a week, I send an email. It's a story, it's a lesson, it's all of this value. But at the very end, and I don't actually sell something every day, but I do make what I consider an offer, which is, hey, go watch this YouTube video or something, some sort of call to action. But if you give you know, value in 85 to 90% of your email, Nobody's mad because at the end you said, P.S., I've got this workshop for sale. And I'm reminding myself all the time, like it used, I, I used to be like, okay, I just launched. I can't do anything for three months. But <laughs> I had a, a couple of mentors, these guys, Rob and Kennedy, that teach email marketing out of the UK. And, you know, they say, um, you know, when people say, how often should you email? And they say, oh, only email on the days you want to make sales, you know, and uh, how often should you make offers? Oh, only make offers on the days that you want to make money in your business. And so, so I've really shifted and, and you do, you have to know, right? If you go all out launch, then maybe yeah. your audience needs a break, but otherwise you can always be making offers. And so I'm always thinking, okay, how else can I help people with this offer that I have? Or how else can I present it a little bit differently? And it's really amazing the impact that, that can have when you change your mindset and make more offers. Plus, every time, you know, previously, in a previous life, when I was only active for a launch for three weeks and then I sort of disappeared, mm-hmm. a- after the launch, I would there would be all this residual business that would come in. And it Mm -hmm. took me a few launches to realize, oh, that's because I was so visible. (laughs) You know, I should be visible more often. You know, you don't have to go and hide afterward, which I'm Mm -hmm. sure you see all the time with people you work with. You have to ride that momentum. I've just had recently a client that launched her membership and that's what she said. I'm so glad. That's the beauty of coaching is when you see the person coaching themselves because you've coached them. (laughs) And she was (laughs) like, no, I realize now that I finished the launch, I can't just disappear, right? I have to do something with this. And I said, yeah. yes, you need to stay present because whoever didn't sign up can sign up for whatever it is that you're, you're going to do next, which I think all of everything that you were saying really ties into the question. So I, I, I want to answer that question. <laughs> okay, well, let's jump into that. The question of the week was from Leah. I want to talk about my business more, but I'm always worried about driving people away if I'm selling all the time. How can I balance between selling and everything else? What would you say to Leah and other people like her? Yeah, so that ties into what you just said about the call to action. I think people um, confuse selling with having a call to action. So there's lots of confusion. And um, and I also want to talk about the making offers, which is you know your, your last tip, because that's one of the things that I ask clients as well, especially the ones that are like, I'm posting all the time, but I'm yeah. still not selling. And I'm like, all right, let's then evaluate what exactly you're doing with this posting all the time. And typically there is no call to action and typically there is no offer making. And so it goes back to the layers of uh, the questions that I asked before is, are you making offers? How often are you making offers? Is there a strategy to that? And that's how you avoid being too salesy is having those periods. And by that, you have to have a plan and be intentional where you are selling, just like what you said. And then even after that period, you're still being intentional with what you're doing after. You're not disappearing and you still have a call to action because the call to action doesn't have to be buy from me now. It could be, what do you think? That's a call to action. You're inviting people to engage with your content without trying to sell or something else that you mentioned that I do. uh, And I think it's so powerful is saying that you're announcing something without announcing it. I'm not offering my offer. You can't buy my offer. You don't even know what my offer is. (laughs) But I can say I am gearing up to doing something. That's content. You're being visible. You're not selling. And if people are offended by that, then I'm sorry. Then you can start unfollowing me, right? 
but it's it's that building up it's that anticipation i guess so i guess that's my answer is you can create anticipation and engagement without asking for the sale but by all means ask for the sale don't be afraid to ask yes. for the sale but be strategic about how you're doing it so that you're not just willy-nilly asking for it every day and then annoying your audience <laughs> I, I love that you said that because what I say to people all the time um, around this is uh, you want want people to want your offer, tell them about it when they can't have it. Mm. Because we all want what we can't have, right? So a lot of times people will come to me, it's like, all right, I've got this thing for sale. I want to start social media marketing. And I'm like, you should have started six months ago. You know, wow. that like that that's when you should start, you know, tell the story of creating the product or the service or whatever, get people on board. Um, and because when you talk about things before they exist, People want them more. As soon as you go into sales mode, they put up their defenses. And so, but the other thing I wanted to add here for uh, Leah on this is, is really think about all of the ways that you can talk about your business that are selling, but they're not selling. So when I worked at an agency, it was a startup and we were experimenting, we were figuring things out. This was uh, 2015. So a lot of people were still figuring out, you know, social media marketing in a sense for businesses. And you know, all of our clients were like, just post about what we're offering every single day. And we're like, oh, we can't do that. You know, we used a, a 20, 80 ratio where it's like, okay, one out of five posts will be more aggressive with our selling. But I noticed with our restaurant clients, we could sell every day because people loved looking at pictures of food, good pictures of food, not terrible lunches, but <laughs> like professionally photographed, well plated food. They loved it. The engagement was insane. And so I started thinking, how can we do that for other businesses? And so whatever you do, you don't always have to show up and be making an offer. You can post about how much you love what you do. You, I don't wanna work with somebody who hates their job, right? You can talk about how awesome your clients are. This is a really great tactic. If you post something about one of your clients or customers and how great they are, that reflects back on you without you going, hey, I'm great. Um, so there's all these ways you can post about your business without selling, but you're still selling, you're reminding people what you do, you're making sure you're there, you're making sure you're visible as this whole discussion is about. And that can go a really, really long way as well. So Love that. if you want to take a deeper dive on any of this, you can go to the sixways.com slash 24, because this is episode number 24. And um, if you want to learn more about visibility, Marta has this great resource, 30 plus visibility ideas. You can download it for free at martaspurk.com slash visibility. Make sure you get the spelling and everything right. You can find it in the show notes or the description wherever you are watching this. By the way, word of mouth is the number one way new people discover this show and get help with their businesses. So if you found this valuable, it would mean the world if you could share it with one or two other people. Believe me, I truly believe we all do better when we all do better. And a big shout out and thank you to everyone who has shared the show this last week. Next week, six ways to simplify your social media and get even better results. All right. And if you like this episode, a couple more for you to check out. We love hearing about how uh, people binge their episodes, binge the episodes once they find the show. And so these are a couple of listener favorites. Number one, six ways to not grow on YouTube. Of course, you can do the opposite and grow. And number two, six ways to use LinkedIn to become a thought leader. Some really good stuff in there, whether you're on LinkedIn or not, about being a thought leader, which obviously increases your, visib in your visibility. I keep wanting to say invisibility. It must be my superhero <laughs> obsession. Uh, to increase your visibility, find the links to those wherever you are watching or listening. Remember, we all do better and we all do better. So keep helping each other out. And Marta, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you.